Hey everyone, this is Connor McBride here for the Fun Robotics Network. I'm here at the UNH District event in Durham, New Hampshire, checking in with Team 6324, the Blue Devils out of Salem, New Hampshire. They have a super awesome robot and an even better season so far. Absolute breakout season. They were a finalist at Greater Boston just a couple weeks ago, and we're going to go do a full deep dive into their robot Poseidon. They have a really cool tilted elevator mechanism, uh, two-in-one scoring mechanism, awesome funnel that parts the seas, drops down, and an awesome deep climb mechanism. We're gonna learn about this robot and why it got a silver medal just a couple weeks ago, right here on Behind the Bumpers. All right, so diving in, we're just gonna go straight away. Let's talk about this awesome tilted elevator. All right, so our tilted elevator, um, it is a two-stage cascading elevator, and the tilted part of it, um, it's actually tilted at a 6.324 degree angle. Um, little reference to our team number. We did a lot of testing in the beginning of the season and we were able to determine that between five and seven degrees was the optimal angle for a tilted elevator. So we said, why not integrate some team branding into it? Um, we also run uh, oh, Kraken X60s. We got two Kraken X60s hooked up to each other with uh, nine to one gear ratios on each one. Uh, the elevator is cascading, so both the stages move at the same time. Um, I'll move them for you right now. We do all four levels of the um, reef. We very much prefer doing all four and we're very good at it. So. We have the nice set points. Um, it's chain driven from like, off of one axle on the bottom and then connected to pulleys uh, and a pinch plate that run the carriage up. And we actually use cut off uh, ratchet like ratcheting wrenches on the bottom here to tension this blue t this uh, blue rope here. And it's really, really simple. And it's just, it wraps around a piece of hex shaft with a hole drilled in it. And we're really happy with how it's performing. We haven't had any major issues at all, knock on wood, um, with it yet. Um, yeah, we're very happy with it so far. Fantastic. No, what, what I really like about the whole tilted elevator design, it's super unique because you normally just see well, a lot of teams this year with just a regular stand up elevator or even going sideways elevator. So it's a really cool approach that 6324 is uh, taking this season. I'd like to move along to your scoring mechanism and work on the whole coral and algae all in one mechanism. Love to hear more about that. Yeah. So our coral mech, we're very happy with it so far. It's currently, um, so each side is two plates. Uh, the inside plate is smoked polycarb. The outside plate is SRPP. From, it's a max composite from Rev Robotics. Uh, we have little centering wheels on the inside here. And the whole entire uh, coral scoring mechanism is one degree of freedom. It's just the elevator that moves up. Um, so we have a supporting bar here that helps guide the coral in. Supporting wheel here that also helps guide the coral in. A flipped poly belt to allow um, a really easy like movement of those bottom wheels there. Uh, we also have a two to one ratio. So we have a smaller pulley on the bottom and a bigger pulley on top for a little bit of torque. It's powered by one Kraken X44, which we've standardized to this season with using all Krakens due to their like not having to use spark max. Uh, we have these little fangs on the front that were just added for a hard stop for the algae mechanism, uh, which has really helped us to possibly be able to clear algae soon. Um, I'll fire some coral. Just want to watch your feet real quick. Sure. That's it in its lowest position. And then the end effector constantly spins until it has a coral automatically detected in it, in which a state machine then activates. You can feed it. A state machine activates, which Cooper can go more in depth into. So when the end effector first receives a coral, it, it sets a flag and starts a state, a kind a, a pretty simple state machine where it will first take in the coral to about yep, let me hurt. it will first jog the coral out until this sensor right here can no longer detect it and then it will work its way back and it will work its way back until both sensors are hit once again and what this allows us to do is it allows our core it allows it to the intake to be much more consistent than with the other methods that we've tried. So, girl. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so as you can see right there, we usually, we get the coral into a consistent position every time we intake, which is really helpful because 
we know it's not going to injure the, the elevator and we know how far away we have to be from the reef. Fantastic. What, so one of the things that I tended, that I had noticed right off the bat when you guys loaded in on Friday night is that you're using that composite material on your scar mechanism. I remember at Greater Boston, that was all polycarb. So what was the, why did you guys end up changing to that composite material? So at Greater Boston, um, right before finals one, the match right before finals one, uh, the inside plate and the outside plate of our end effector snapped in half. Oh wow. So we had to do a little repair. We used an SDS two plug and just bolted it as almost like a little crushed, a little uh, crush block that allowed us to keep continuing it throughout the event. We actually never fully like failed at Greater Boston. We were able to still um, cycle, even though the elevator and the ineffector was slightly tipped like that. It was just really, really effective. And we we buffed, we beefed it up uh, for this event. Uh, we optimized the, um, comparatively the last event, we optimized the location of the standoffs. So we actually have a lot less wobble in the end effector. That's actually the whole entire carriage moving. Uh, we're much, much happier with how like the wobble is because that was preventing us from intaking at some times. Um, and that preventing us from intaking slowed our cycle times down and getting the state machine fully working. And with these sensors, they're actually not brake beams. They're uh, LiDAR based, so you're oh, actually wow. able to calibrate them with a little Phillips head, uh, sorry, flathead screwdriver on the back, so you can change the distance at which they're activated. Um, they're really, really, really nice, because um, you're able to dial it in, and if, say, it's not working one match, you just turn the screw a little bit, it just works really reliably, and it's very fast, it's a very fast response, and that all that data gets fed, fed into our orange pie down there. Fantastic. So. I know you guys have also capabilities of, uh, looks like at least removing algae from the reef. Uh, love to go in a little bit more in detail on that. And also would love to know the backstory about this uh, this two by four here on your robot. Yeah, so one of our mentors uh, loves integrating wood into the robot, but I'm gonna hand it off to Mason who actually designed this. Yeah, so our algae uh, effector is uh, currently not functioning. However, uh, the uh, the specific reason for this block of wood is when we were first uh, putting it on the actual robot, um, the algae effector would, uh, on its own, wiggle like far too much, and when it was held from the two points it's stuck at on the axle, it would uh, actually bend to one side. Sure. So the the two by four is just there to uh, add some extra rigi rigidity to our robot. Um, the 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 goal that I had when I was designing this uh, was to use as little uh, additional parts as required to get it functioning. Um, the current problem we're running into is that this pulley right here uh, tends to skip. So we plan on altering it to a uh, chain and sprocket system in order to uh, prevent that skippage. Mm -hmm. um, but what it, what's happening is we're running this pulley uh, it has a bearing in the center of the pulley, so it's connected to the same axle as these wheels, but it's able to use that axle as a dead axle. So it has free rotation, but it's not inhibited by this axle moving forward or back. Uh, but this pulley on the side is directly linked to that axle. So while these wheels are spinning to rotate, our, end, our actual wheels at the end to affect the algae are rotating with it. Fantastic. No, it was a really awesome scoring mechanism. I love the whole packaging as well, because you're able to fit two, two independent uh, <clears throat> mechanisms here with coral and algae all into one package, but also still maintaining that one degree of freedom, which is really, really key. And, you know, being able to get that robot out to your software team and drive team to be able to start practicing as fast as you can, which is really, really awesome. I like to uh, go and pivot to the backside of your robot here and uh, really talk about the uh, the funnel. You have a really interesting way to be able to get that funnel out of the way so you can deep climb. Uh, let's learn more about this. Yeah, so this is a recent addition from uh, at the end of Greater Boston. Uh, we tended to run into a couple, uh, not issues, but we wouldn't, we were not able to climb with our former hopper design of a full plate of polycarb that we bent for these uh, edges right here. So we pivoted to a four plate system where uh, we have these two side plates bolted to these one by ones right down here. Um, and then for the actual uh, main body of the harp hopper, we have them riveted to hinges right here. 
that uh, allow us to have this uh, beam, this uh, angle bracket right here that we can uh, take this servo out and it should just fall due to gravity. Oh, wow, that's really cool. So all we have to do is move a servo and then the whole hopper's out of the way in order for the climber to activate. Fantastic. No, it's super, really creative way. I, I can, I've seen a whole bunch of teams where like they, they swing it up, they swing it down. I haven't really seen a whole lot of teams actually have it fold straight down and kind of like parting the Red Seas kind of thing. So it's mm -hmm. a very unique approach that I, that I really got to see. So uh, now we see your, uh, we see your deep climb mechanism <laughs> moving. So let's jump right on into that. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So again, this was done in a very quick time span. So it's really great how well it's been working for us uh currently uh right at the end here is our actual uh hook that grapples onto the cage uh it squeezes in like this in order to actually get through the cage and hook onto it and then once it autom it automatically jolts out like that due to a uh, piece of surgical tubing we have right mm. here that pretty much rubber bands it forward um as well as we have a winch system right down here that's uh, run by an X60. Uh, it's able to rotate it back with resistance from these other surgical tubes right up here. It's a really convenient system. It's simple and it's effective. Um, and we haven't had many issues with it uh, this entire event. It's been very, it's been very reliable. It's been very good. Um, it, which is very much uh, the entire goal of our robot. It's to be simple and reliable. Awesome, I love to hear it. Hey, well, once again, this is team 6324, the Blue Devils out of Salem, New Hampshire. If you have not heard about this team before, well, you just heard about them now and they're gonna be gunning for your spot at the New England District Championship in a couple of weeks. You guys are doing awesome so far here at UNH. Can't wait to see what you guys do the rest of day two and throughout playoffs. Have an awesome season. Thank you guys very much. Thank, Thank you. you.